ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ به من شرور انفسنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله indeed all praises to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we praise him we seek his guidance we seek his forgiveness we seek refuge with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for our own shortcomings and mistakes and whoever is guided by allah no one can misguide and whoever does not receive the guidance from allah no one can guide and i bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except allah and i bear witness that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was his servant and his messenger my dear believers allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us in the quran a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun that all you who believe be mindful of allah be conscious of allah that is the right of allah and you shall not depart from this world other than in the state of being a muslim this is a commitment of our lifetime my brothers and sisters to believe in allah and to follow his commandments and the guidance that he subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us and it is until the day we depart from this world may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala count us among those who are believers and muslims when we depart from this world and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in the quran يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما indeed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is again addressing us that oh you believe be mindful of allah fear allah and speak in straightforward words develop this quality in in, in ourselves that we are truthful people we are right we speak what is right and we are not we do not shy away from standing up for what is right and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you will do so then allah will correct your deeds for your own benefit and forgive you forgive your sins and whoever obeys allah and his messenger indeed achieves a great success in the last few days my brothers and sisters it's been a couple of weeks now the atrocities the killings of innocent people that we are witnessing it is you know obviously disturbing all of us we all feel our hearts are bleeding we are sad what we have been witnessing and you know finding ways to to express what how we feel are sometimes challenging and and difficult yes we are organizing demonstrations in different cities as muslim community trying to raise awareness raise our voice that you know injustices has been taking far too long 73 years of occupation is far too long people their voices is not being heard people who have been pushed out of their homes for decades and generations are not able to go back to their places and then obviously there is a long history of it and how the world superpowers fail people and it's not just you know we can palestine is is in what we are witnessing right now but the issue of kashmir or other places in the world the colonialism the effect that they have left behind the the making of boundaries and countries which were unnatural and then the colonization and the facts afterwards we are still witnessing we are still the world is is seeing the pain and the and the casualties and the loss of life and the injustices which is it's still happening so what are our responsibilities and we also saw locally that one of our school board member a muslim school board member sister abrar issued a tweet remembering the brothers and sisters of palestine and then there was a campaign launched by some extremist zionists to silence her or to kick her out from the school fairfax county school board so this is you know where is the, the the freedom of expression where are all those aspects which are built in in this society and this this republic 
But before we, you know, there are aspects that we can address those. But as believers, what are our roles and responsibilities? How do we react to situations like that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Tawbah addresses us and reminds us of our relationship towards one another and our duties towards one another and towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses us. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan rajeem. Wal mu'minuna wal mu'minat. Ba'duhum awliya wa ba'd. Ya'maruna bil ma'roof. Wa yanhawna anil bunkar. Wa yuqeemuna as-salaa. Wa yutuna az-zakaa. Wa yutiyuna Allah wa rasoolahu. أُولَٰئِكَ سَيَرْحَمُهُمُ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزِيزٌ حَكِيمٌ This is ayah number 71 from Surah Tawbah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us that the believers, men and women, the believers, men and women are protectors or supporters or comrades to one another. They enjoy what is just. يَعْمَرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوبِ وَيَنْحَوْنَ عَلَى الْمُنْكَرِ So they enjoy what is just and they forbid what is wrong. And then they establish prayer. And they give charity. So they look at the qualities that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is, is uh, reminding us of the believers. That they establish prayer, they give charity, and obey Allah and His Messenger. And what will happen to them? On them Allah will pour His mercy. People, believers with such qualities, Allah will pour His mercy upon them. For Allah is exalted in power and wise. So there are three or four aspects that I would quickly would like to remind myself and all of us. That our relationship towards one another is based upon Iman. Our relationship towards another is based upon our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala our iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has provided us and this relationship with that relationship we are brothers and sisters to one another we are protectors and supporters of one another and our deen also guides us that what kind of support and protection that we extend towards one another where Prophet of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam at one occasion reminded that help your brother if he is oppressor and help your brother if he is oppressing. Again the aspect of that we are going to stand and, and, and show our support, our protection based upon the guidance from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We are not going to be unjust towards one another or to someone because someone we like or because of someone's character or status in the society. No, it is based upon Iman. That is how we are to relate to one another and protect one another. And when Rasulullah was asked that how do we, we understand that how do, to, to, to help the oppressor, but how do you help the oppressed, the one that who is making the oppression? And Prophet ﷺ said, stop him from committing oppression. So the guidance is that we are not to remain silent when we are seeing oppression happening. Our deen it encourages us to be activists. In today's terminology, the term used is activists. So our deen teaches us to be activists, not to be silent, not to just observe and feel bad about it. At another occasion, Prophet ﷺ also taught us that when you see oppression happening, stop it from your hand. Use your ability and power that Allah has given you and stop that oppression. If you cannot do that, use your words. And say about it, not remain silent about it, but even if you cannot do that, then feeling bad in our heart and with Rasulullah said that is the weakest of the Iman. Activism, raising our voices, showing our concerns, reaching out, making calls to the politicians of the country, making our attempts that what we are witnessing right now, the oppression, the injustices, the cruelty, the atrocities is wrong. And we are asking you because you represent us in the Congress or you represent us in the Senate or you represent us in the state that we have to do something against them. So that is the activism, my brother and sister, that I'm talking about. We, members of the society, 
We will do in all of our capacity that this democracy allows in a civil way that we will, will, will not be silent when we will see these atrocities happening. So this social, that is the social dimension of this ayah. Our relationship with one another based upon our deen, our iman. Then there is the spiritual core and dimension of the ayah. Personally, how do you strengthen yourself in iman? Establishing prayer. Connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Remain coming back to Allah, asking Allah for help, asking Allah for guidance. Praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I, in my own capacity, I'm trying my best, but help comes from you. Nusra comes from you. You have the power that, that is unseen. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we make dua. Remember Badr or Ahad or Khanda or small numbers stood up against large armies. They were not afraid. They trusted in Allah. They did all the best that they could to prepare. And then they put the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we're not people to be afraid of someone. We are only afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the third dimension of the ayah is moral code. Atiullah wa Rasul. We obey Allah and His Messenger. Which is another the earlier ayah that I also recited that whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger indeed achieves a great success. And that is the great success, my brothers and sisters, that we are asking Allah to give us. Sometimes success comes in this life, but the greatest of the success is the life of the hereafter. So be active, be involved, and in whatever capacity we can, find a way to stand up for what is right and to stand against what is wrong. أقول أقول هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ورسائل المسلمين الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله قال الله تعالى في القرآن المجيد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد My brothers and sisters when it comes to the issue of Palestine, there is a change happening in the United States of America. Politicians may be small in number, but they are standing up in the Congress and not accepting what is being conveyed to them by Israel or by the Zionists of America. A few numbers, but they are standing up. They are saying what is wrong that is taking place in that country. If you are saying that you are killing the terrorists, why are you demolishing 25 schools in Gaza? According to UN, 25 schools demolished in these 10 days in Gaza. Why? Now these are some of the things that atrocities that now people are talking about in the United States. I was reading earlier a news and they presented that in 2021 a record 23% of members of the House and Senate were people of Black, Hispanic, Asian, Pacific or Native American identity. So there is change happening in the highest political chambers of our nation. And these people who are in some cases coming from the street, activists, these people who are, have struggled in their own communities when it comes to Black Lives Matter movement or other social justice movements in the nation. Now they are reaching in the higher chambers of the country. 
And that is where the, dis the difference is taking place. And it again comes back to, again, our responsibilities, our duty. Not to remain silent. What this democracy allows, we will make sure that we use all of those resources to stand up for what is right and to stand against what is wrong. Amr bil ma'roof wa nahiyan al May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy upon us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all on the right path. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters of Palestine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them to receive freedom. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them to live their lives freely as we live our lives free. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help all the people who are oppressed all over the world. Rabbana taqabbal minna inna kanta samiyul alim wa tub alayna inna kanta tawwabur rahim Ibadullah rahimakumullah inna Allah ya'amru bil adl wa tihsan wa hitayil qurba wa yanha anil fahshai wal munkar aqim as-sulam